Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Happy Tuesday to everybody. It is Tuesday. Hey, 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 around here, that's recording day. But grateful to the Lord for just another day. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me through all evil when my mind stayed on Jesus. Just another day that the Lord has killed me just another day that the Lord has killed me just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil when my mind stayed on Jesus. Just another day Oh, that the Lord, he has killed me. Whoo, let me stop. Let me stop. Boy, that was about to take me somewhere. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> I was finna say, this is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it, glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That's what I was trying to say. But then another day took over. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. You're on the Dominion Devotionals. With yours truly, Pastor Jose of CBC of Hawthorne. So excited to be on with you this morning. Amen. Father, bless us now. Bless our time together. Make it effective. Make it efficient. Make it productive, make it enlightening, make it inspirational, make it motivating, make it encouraging, make it fulfilling, that we might fulfill your plan and your purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That being said, good morning, Big Dice. Good morning, Talisha Du. Good morning to you. Good morning, Flies Missionary Kendall. Good morning, my brother William Brown. Good morning, Miss Lisa Red. Good morning, Sister Keisha McDonald, my brother Bill Payne. Good morning, Sister Marquita. Yes, just another day the Lord has kept us. And good morning, Miss Linda. See who we have on the personal page. Good morning, Sister Beatrice. Good morning. Sister Sharice Jackson, praise God. Good morning, Sister Latanya Johnson, praise God for you. Good morning, Kenneth Bradley, bless you. 
Pray for Harris and Bradley. We sure will. Good morning, Sister Darlene Collins. Praise God. Good morning, uh, Brother Matthew. Good morning, Sister Rachel Du. Father, we pray right now for the Harris and Bradley that you would bless them, bless that family, protect them, and keep them in your perfect will and in your perfect way forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. So we're going into the word of God. This week, our theme for this week, we're focusing, coming from last Sunday, on self-awareness. Self-awareness. Knowing thyself, if you will. Because from last Sunday, we recognize the fact that Eve ate from the tree, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, based on her deception or lack of understanding of who she already was. For Satan told her, if you eat from this tree, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Don't you want to be like God? And so she lacked the awareness that she was already like God created in the image and likeness of God. And if Satan can get you to try to be who you already are, making attempts, going against the will of God to try to be like God, uh, it's, it's deceptive. So I've learned that one of the things that really hinders our ability to walk in our divine dominion as God has ordained for our lives is our lack of true self-awareness, awareness of our true selves, of who God has already created us to be. Because we tend to labor intensively in order to try to be something, as opposed to waking up to the revelation or the awareness or the consciousness that through Jesus Christ, I already am. And then living out of that consciousness, out of that revelation, out of that awareness, operating out of who God already made me through Jesus versus me trying to be accepted in the beloved, trying to get to a place where God can use me, trying to measure up if you will, Jesus measured me up. <laughs> His measurement is the only one that makes me worthy. It's the only one that allowed God to use me. And this is why the Bible says, awake to righteousness and sin not. The moment we truly awaken to who we already are in Christ Jesus, that's when we'll do a much better job of acting and living it out. All right, let's go to the scripture. Our scripture reading for this from this morning. Our scripture reading for this morning will come from Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, where I will begin reading at verse number 1, and I'm going to read all the way down to verse number 14. That's right. I said I was going to start putting my scriptures in the chat box so anyone who may come in later miss it will know where we're coming from just tend to keep forgetting that okay exodus 3 1 through 14. All right, you should have it by now. The Bible reads as follows. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. 
And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am, or here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large land, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he says, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he says, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. <laughs> Bring back memories of the inception of the I am young adult ministry at City Refuge, which I had the privilege of leading for many years. That was our focal scripture. I am have sent me unto you. I am. Now we're talking about self-awareness and that has been the greatest challenge God has ever had in fulfilling his purpose through mankind. His greatest challenge hasn't been the miracles he did. <laughs> God's greatest challenge hasn't been uh, choosing people or knowing who to choose. God's greatest challenge has never been defeating the enemy. The greatest challenge God has ever had in any of his great works has been convincing the people that he chose that he could do it through them. Getting the people to become consciously aware of who he, their creator, created them to be. <laughs> God's most challenging sale is selling you on you, getting you to believe in you. And here, Moses' beginnings or calling, if you will, is just another example of that truth for here God is showing up to Moses in the burning bush 
to get his attention. The bush won't burn up. And Moses turns aside to go see what's happening. And God begins to speak to him. First, he tells him, don't come any closer. This is holy ground. You need to take off your foot, your shoes first. You need to show some respect. And Moses wants to know who he's talking to. Say, I'm the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. Now, I could go into a list. I could go into a whole other workshop on how God always uses his references. You know, when you write a resume or you submit an application, a third one, it always requires references. And God has always revealed his credibility through his references. <laughs> And when Moses realized who he was talking to, he was immediately afraid. He felt so unworthy. He hid his face. He said, I'm not worthy to be talking to God. <clears throat> and then I want to focus on what God says next. God begins to reveal to Moses how he saw the affliction of his people in Egypt. It's something that Moses was very familiar with because he was actually a fugitive of Egypt because he killed one of the Egyptian guards that was beating one of the Hebrew slaves. And he was he fled for his life for the crime he was guilty of. So now he's a fugitive. And God's telling him, and so Moses was moved by the, the plight of his people, for he too was a Hebrew, although he was raised in Pharaoh's house. So when God tells him, I've seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt, I know that immediately got Moses' attention because I'm sure his heart was still with him. And he says, he's heard their cry and Moses probably found a relief like, finally, God, you, you've, you've heard their cry, finally. You're going to do something about it. So I'm sure Moses was beginning to become very optimistic at this moment in the conversation. And then he hears God say, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian. By now, Moses ought to be turning flips inside like, yes, I knew their God was real. I knew the God of Israel was real. Because now he's gotten confirmation that even though it's taken all of this time, God is going to deliver them. God's getting ready to do it. And Moses now, I'm sure he's really excited. And then God even goes deeper and tells him how good he's going to bless him. He said, I'm going to bring them out of that land. And I'm going to take them to a big, large, good land. I'm talking about a land flowing with milk and honey. Woo! I'm going to give them the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the people that they envied. Uh, uh, for lack of better words, all these years, I'm going to give them that land. And Moses is probably so excited. Like, yes, Lord. Thank you. Finally, I can rest knowing my people not only will be delivered, but they will be blessed beyond measure. And then <laughs> God gives him the true headline. He says, now, therefore, because children of Israel came to me and because I've seen their oppression, because I've heard their cry, I need you to come because I'm sending you to Pharaoh. <laughs> I'm sending you to the most powerful man on the planet. I'm sending you to the king of Egypt. And I need you, Moses to bring forth my people that I just finished describing that you're very familiar with. I need you to bring them out of Egypt into what I've just promised them. Come on, we got work to do. No time to waste. Let's get started. And watch Moses' immediate response. 
And Moses said unto God, wait, wait, wait a minute. God, uh, Jehovah, uh, Master, uh, who am I that I should be the one to go to Pharaoh and, and tell him to let your people go? Moses asking God, who, I don't know who you think I am. And herein lies the problem. <laughs> the problem has never been who God thinks you are. The problem has always been who do you think you are? Because maybe your thoughts have been wrong all of these years. <laughs> God say, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil <laughs> to give you an expected end. God said, I know exactly who you are. I created you and I know what I put in you in the day of your creation. I established you before your parents delivered you to this planet. <laughs> Moses says, who am I? He lacks true self-awareness. He's not fully aware of who he really is. God just told him who you are. You're the deliverer of the children of Israel. You're God's mighty deliverer that will lead them from bondage to the promised land. <laughs> And Moses says, who am I? Who do you think I am? Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know that I'm a fugitive? That I'm still on Egypt's most wanted list? You know there's a reward out for my head? <laughs> Watch God's answer. God's answer says, Moses, don't trip. I'm going with you. <laughs> oh, this is so good to me. God's answer to that <laughs> is, oh, no, no, that doesn't matter. I'm going to be with you. Moses is a fugitive. Moses has been on the run for 40 years. Moses don't talk well. He got a speech impediment. He didn't got older. He ain't young and strong as he used to be. And God's answer, oh, it's cool. I'm going with you. <laughs> I'm going to be with you. <laughs> that answer Removes every one of your excuses. Here's why. Here's why it removes your excuses. He says, I will be with you. Moses says, but when I come to them, they go ask me who sent me. Who should I say sent me? I don't really know your name like that. And God says to Moses, I am that I am. First name I am, middle name that, last name I am. <laughs> Tell them I am has sent you unto them. I am what? Now, that's the answer to your question of why is me going with you more than enough? God says, don't trip over whatever you don't do well, whatever you think you don't have that you think you need, whatever you think makes you less qualified for the assignment. He says, don't trip. I'm going to be with you. <laughs> Who are you? I am. Am what? What you need. <laughs> Long before Curtis Mayfield. God was saying, 
I'm your brother, I'm your healer, I'm your daddy, your deliverer, I'm your, <laughs> I'm your savior. <laughs> God says, I am going with you. What is your excuse when the great I am is with you? Lord, I don't have the degree. I am knowledge. <laughs> Lord, I don't have the experience. <laughs> I'm ancient of days. Lord, I don't have the money. I am provision. Lord, I don't have the support. I'm a friend that's sits closer than a brother. What do you mean? <laughs> there is no excuses when God is with you. Because he, can I, can I butcher the English language to make this point real? See, some things to make the impact, I got to be country with it. God says, I am what you ain't. He says, it matters not what you don't have. I am what you're not. So if I am with you, if I am is with you, what could you possibly be lacking? It doesn't matter because God is the difference maker in all things. Awareness. What have you not been doing because you lack confidence or knowledge? and who God really created you to be. Because that's who you already are. It matters not if you've not been walking in it at all. You still are. You really don't know who you are? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Good Google it, woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ah, glory. Listen to what he just says. The only way you will discover your true self is if you quit running from challenges. The only way you will know who you are is if you continue to do stuff you've never done. If you continue to push the envelope, if you continue to embrace new, 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 new challenges, uncharted territory, you have to do things you've never done to acknowledge that that was in you. Whatever I bring you to, I've called you to. You, oh my God, how can I say this, Lord? <sighs> you have to follow things in your heart that you have no past point of reference for to reveal yourself. Oh, you got to go places you've never been to discover who you've always been. Oh, <laughs> you got to try stuff nobody in your family ever did to discover that you're that. I put it in you. That's why every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I already given. You don't even know what's yours because you ain't never pursued half the things that I got for you. Good Lord, oh my, good God Almighty. This is good teaching, boy. You better catch this. This is blessing me right now. There is so much more in you. You've just never explored it. That's why you don't think you can do it. You think you can't do it just because you ain't never done it. You don't even know what you're capable of. Oh, it's like one of the movies, right? Like It's like The Matrix. You know, he was the one. But he didn't even know. They was like, oh, this guy is capable of things we've never imagined. He didn't even know what he was capable of. He had to be placed in, in very severe, strenuous situations to get out of him what was in him. God sometimes allows us to be in strenuous situations and challenges just to show us who we are. All right, I got to stop. I got to stop. I ain't out of word, but I'm over time. Self-awareness. Know thyself. God spent this time 
trying to show Moses who he was so he could get him to do what he was created to do. And there's more with Moses. I ain't through with him because God wasn't through with him that then yet either. But we'll pick up on the rest of that tomorrow. We'll continue how God made Moses aware of who he already was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> Sister Tiffany say, don't stop. <laughs> don't stop till you get in there. Come on. Praise God. We're going to continue this same, the, this same story tomorrow at 8 a.m. We're picking up with Moses. Boy, that was getting good to me, too. I can't lie. All right. Uh, what do I have coming up? Boy, I'm everything else that escaped my mind. Do I have any announcements? Yes, God said the same. Pastor Johnson and I will be back on together this Saturday morning at 10 a.m., for our interactive Bible study as we share notes and we just have a Holy Ghost sparring session with the Word of God. So join us 10 a.m. on these platforms because we don't know what revelation is going to come out when we just start chopping it up and sharing notes and comparing scriptures and wherever God leads us. It's completely organic. I don't know what he's going to say. He don't know what I'm going to say. We literally just do what we do on the phone. We talk about scripture and we glean from one another and we're just inviting you into the conversation, but we are focused on dominion, understanding dominion. So you don't want to miss that conversation. God bless your life. 10 a.m. this Saturday. Also, my wife at 11 a.m. As soon as with that, we will be doing that from 10 to 11. At 11 a.m., she will be doing her domestic violence workshop. I'm going to put that link in the description right now is dv.eventbrite.com. You can go and register for that today. dv.eventbrite.com. dv.eventbrite.com. Domestic Violence Workshop. Many of those proceeds will be going to domestic violence organizations. And I hear they had a wonderful time last Saturday, so you don't want to miss it. And on the final Saturday of this month, which is February the 27th, we'll be back with the mental health panel. And we'll be focusing, I guess, on knowing yourself, <laughs> on self-awareness, because we're going to be talking about self-esteem with how we see ourselves mentally and how we help that when it's being challenged with the wrong images. So stay tuned. So much more to come. Hallelujah. Oh, wait a minute. I do have another announcement. Hold on. Let me put this. This is this is my last announcement. You know, many people are hurting right now. And we've got a resource to help you. Praise God. So you definitely want to hear what I'm getting ready to announce right now. at gmail.com. All right. I could got Calvary's Gmail address up on all platforms. Here's the announcement. <clears throat> Let me read the announcement, brother. That would be much more beneficial, effective, so I don't miss out on anything. Let me find the announcement and then I'll read it. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Listen, the Green Foundation, grateful for the Green Foundation. They've partnered with us on a couple of things. They have resources. If you're in need of any COVID 19 support services, such as if you need help with food, if you need help with utilities, rent, health insurance, gift cards, health education, uh, just so many, so many services they have. 
so many services. Just you need help. You're in this pandemic and it's gotten rough on you and you need some assistance and some help and you need it now. Stay calm, stay informed, community resource guide, food, utilities, rent, health insurance, gift cards, act now, health education, etc. The Green Foundation has resources available to help. Now, I don't know all the criteria of how you get the help with your rent and how you get the utilities and how you get. I don't have all of those criteria, but I know they have financial resources available to help you now. So here is all you need to do, and we will get you to them. Email Calvary at calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com. I put it in there, calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com. You need your name, your phone number, and what you need help with. And someone from the Green Foundation will be contacting you to whatever their process is to get you that help. Now, again, we're grateful to have a relationship with Green Foundation, but Green Foundations are the sponsors of what I'm talking about. So we're just connecting you to them. Email us at calvaryhopthorn at gmail.com. I put it in the chat box. Your name, your telephone number, and what you need help with. That list, uh, uh, what type of help services you're looking for. And they will receive that information and they will be contacting you. Praise God, one of their workers are on the line with me now. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Tatiana. So listen, email us, and we will get you connected. Praise God. Praise God. All right, that's my time. I'm not out of word, but I am out of time. So let's shout out who we got. Big Dice, bless you. Talisha Do, God bless you. Uh, Flies Missionary Kindle, God bless you. Oh, this is an announcement. Tomorrow, many of you have been asking me about the relationship seminar that I did this past weekend. I'm going to, this is what I decided to do. There were four sessions. I did four sessions. I did two Friday night and two Saturday, and I've decided I'm going to come back and do something else on in March. So to keep some continuity, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post, because thank God Pastor Brian been editing for me and all of that. I'm going to post one of those sessions every week starting tomorrow. So tomorrow being Wednesday, hump day, I'm going to post session one, the following week, session two, the following week, session three, the following week, session four, and hopefully if things go right, by the following week, I'll be doing another one in March. <laughs> So I'm trying to create some consistency here. So stay tuned. I'm finally going to post them on my personal YouTube channel, but I'll have that link posted on all platforms so you can go to it and uh, enjoy that. If you missed it or if you got it and you know you need a recap and hear that information again because you weren't taking notes fast enough or something like that, I'm coming back to you. So tomorrow, look forward for session one of Am I Qualified for Love? And our first session we deal with is Adam, when Adam's qualified. So it's just for men. No, women, you need to know so you can identify a qualified Adam versus one that ain't ready yet. <laughs> so it's for both. <laughs> but we'll be posting that tomorrow. All right. God bless you, Big Dice. Sister Talisha Du, Sister Kendall, William Brown, Lisa Red, Keisha McDonald, Bill Payne, Sister Marquita, Miss Linda, Sister Melissa Hunter, praise God, Brother Quasia, Latoya Jones. God bless you, Sister Latoya Jones. Our prayers are with you. Amen. We know you celebrating your brother's birthday, although he's in heaven. Our, our prayers go out to you. Rest in peace, Brother Tyrone. God bless you. Bless you, Sister Cheryl Lowe. Bless you, Brother Quasia, Sister Sharon Marshall. God bless you. Kimberly Cutliffe, Karen Lewis. God bless you. 
Miss Annie, Miss Pauline, God bless you. Deacon Vincent, Sister Lawanda, Miss Lisa, God bless you. God bless you, Miss Marilyn Williams. God bless you. Yes, yeah, sure. We got to align our thoughts with God's thoughts. Amen. Praise God for you. Sister Candace, bless you, girl. Keep making it do what it do. Let us know when we can tune in. Hallelujah. Melissa Hunter, God bless you. Bless you, Sister Tiffany. God bless you. Who else I got? Sister Tatiana, God bless you. Sister Sarah Dawson, God bless you. All the way from belief. Praise God. We got everybody watching. So grateful. So grateful. And who do I have on my personnel? Let's see. Who are you? Where are you? Here we go. Bless you again, Sister Beatrice. Sister Sharice Jackson. Bless you. Sister Latanya Johnson. Kenneth Bradley. Hallelujah. Darlene Collins. Brother Matthew. Rachel Dew. God bless you, David Anderson. What's good, brother? Bless you, Big Dave. Bless you, Sister Gloria Calhoun. God bless you, Darlene Collins. God bless you, Miss Norma Williams. Bless you, brother Tony. What's good, bro? Bless you, Pastor Johnson. We on. I'm on with Pastor Johnson this Saturday, 10 a.m. Don't miss it. Bless you, Sister Audrey Jackson. God bless you. Praise God for you all. Bless you, Uncle John. What's up, huh? Man, bless you, brother. Y'all be easy out there in Louisiana, man. I hear it's been snowing like crazy, so stay safe. Praise God. Bless you, Sandy Moore. God bless you. Bless you, Sister Michelle Wicks. God bless you. Valerie Witherspoon. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one. God bless you, Von Hudson Yorker. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm out of time. Until next time, that's my time. See you tomorrow at 8.